This is Wraith from Wraith Rain. I'm an author of serialized gay romance fiction. Every week on this podcast, I'll be reading a chapter from one of my gay fantasy shifter serials called Dragon's Rain. I'll explain at the break how you can find out more about this story and others I write. So let's get to it. Chapter 129, Deja Vu. Caden and Iolair gently put the humans onto the ground. A young woman with blood on her dark-skinned cheek and deep brown eyes filled with tears gazed up at them with awe and gratefulness. It's okay now. Well, mostly, go on, go home. They gestured for the young woman to run. Her friend, a young man with the same deep brown eyes and also spattered with blood, grasped her forearm. He nodded to them, and then he and the girl took off into the crowd, who were also running in all directions. Shift? Iolaire asked as they watched those they saved disappeared. Last time we did that, I got us into a lot of trouble, Caden reminded his spirit. Besides, we need an aerial view to find the naked people, a.k.a. the Horde, or what's left of it. His mind flashed back on Shioni's still body on the bridge. Part of him wanted to go back there. Iolaire made a soft, wounded sound. Not in our power, Iolaire murmured. Caden knew what his spirit meant. Their powers didn't run to healing. None of the dragons had the ability to heal, no matter how great they were. That was beyond them all. She'll be all right. She has to be, Caden thought. Iolaire murmured its agreement, but there was worry there. Come on, we have to focus. Shioni would want us to focus and ice the horde down. Iolaire assented eagerly and turned their head towards the fleeing naked butt of what could only be Landry's eldest brother. His feet slid on the loose dirt in the canyon that the behemoth had created. Let's give him some ice weights to keep him where he is, huh, Iolaire? Iolaire twittered. They sent a blast of ice that wound around the young man's body. When the frost cleared, Landry's brother was surrounded in a cocoon of ice up to his neck. The behemoth stared up at them in rage and fear. Your time is done, behemoth, Caden said. The behemoth's eyes narrowed. Not yet. Not done yet. Their head whipped around at the scream of fear from a child's throat. Landry's other brother held a little boy in front of his naked body, a cruel smile on his lips that had never been there when a human soul was inside it. One of the behemoth's hands curled cruelly around the tender throat. The behemoth's hand was so large in comparison that its fingers touched at the back. The little boy's tiny hand scrabbled at that big hand as a child fought to breathe. Iolaire, we need some surgical precision here. Can we do it? Yes, we are one. We can do so much, Iolaire answered. In his mind, Caden saw ice forming between the behemoth's palm and the child's neck, forcing those fingers apart, but not hurting the little boy. Let's do it! There was no need to use their breath. Ice formed where they willed it, and the behemoth gave out a startled shout as it lost its grip on the little boy. The child fell down on the ground before the behemoth, blinking in confusion as he dragged in frantic breaths. Go, little one! Caden commanded, though the child shouldn't have been able to hear him, or at least people had not before. This time the little boy did. He nodded and scrambled to his feet. He ran as fast as little legs would take him. Let's shut this one down too, Caden said. Once more, one of Landry's brothers was encased in ice. Two more, Landry's and Jasper's forms, Iolaire told him. Of course it would be them, Caden thought, and they closed their eyes for a moment. All those people in the horde and the behemoth only needs four to contain it? Four with purpose. Four with great desire in their hearts. Four with nothing left to lose, Iolaire explained. Yeah, Jasper because he wanted power and respect more than anything. Landry because she thought by betraying me she had no other place to go. And her brothers because they love her more than anything and would go wherever she does, Caden realized. Yes. Know now the mistakes they made. Know now that the behemoth is only death. Soon they will get to repent their choice, but we must not let them cause more death before then, Iolaire said. 
listen to you, sounding all wise and sage-like. Most I've heard you ever say, Caden laughed. Iolair then merely twittered, all worded out, but with pride. Where are they? We need to suit them up with ice, Caden said as they swooped back up into the air. The wind from their wings caused people to shrink down onto the ground. The humans covered their faces with forearms and hands, but they still peeked up at them. Despite the danger, the people couldn't seem to stay away from them. Under other circumstances, Iolaire would have been excited because more people meant more pets. But now it just meant more danger to them. Humans were fragile, and they didn't want them getting hurt. They were also giving the behemoth plenty of potential victims. Caden suppressed a sigh. They were really going to have to go all after school specials about what to do when there's a dragon attack and how not to run towards the fight. There, on the roof, Iolaire cried. They turned their heads towards the top of the Emporium. On the roof stood Landry. She was standing on the edge, holding two people, one in each hand, with their feet dangling off the edge. If they did the same trick they'd done with her brother, the humans would fall to the ground, crushed, broken, dead, far before they could swoop in and save them. Landry, Caden cried. His friend's face still called to him, like it had in the street before when they'd overwhelmed him. He couldn't help the anguish mixed with hope he felt when he saw her. But in her eyes was not the soul of his friend, but the evil of the behemoth. We can't kill her, Iolaire. The only chance Landry has of coming back is for her body to still function, Hayden said. Iolaire twittered. It knew, it understood, but it also gently pointed out to him that the death of innocence might be the cost to bringing Landry back. Caden's heart sank. He loved Landry. He would kill to protect her. But not innocence. She had made a choice. It had been such a powerful choice that the behemoth didn't need most of the horde to transition in this world, but just the four of them. Oh, gods, Iolaire. I, I don't know what to do, Caden cried. Love is what drew me to you, Ella whispered. But, but love isn't just for a single person. It's for all people, isn't it? Caden asked. Yes. Such a simple answer, but Caden felt like a hypocrite. If it were Valerius there, he would let the humans die. He would mourn them. He would hate the choice, but he would do it. The difference was that there had been a choice for Landry that had led her here. Let's find a way. Caden stopped. We can't, can't let people die for her. Landry would understand, even if I don't. They lowered until their eyes were even with Landry's. She was smiling. The behemoth was smiling. This is over, behemoth, Caden said again. You are prolonging the inevitable. I am death. I cannot die. The behemoth said, though Landry's lips did not move. That was an interesting thought. The dragons had destroyed the behemoth before, but it had come back. Maybe it always would. That wasn't comforting, not exactly. But it also meant that the other dragons would always come back too, the ones that they had battled and won against. Maybe you can't be destroyed, not forever. But this time is done, Caden said. Your little plan is over. Landry cocked her head to the side as if amused by this. It was almost the look she'd give. But her hair wasn't covering her eyes, so he knew it wasn't her. Maybe you're right, but I want to make you feel my failure and make it yours, the behemoth said. The behemoth released boast of the humans. Screams came from their throats. They were halfway down the building before Caden could even think to act. Thankfully, Iolaire was ahead of him, as usual, and the two humans disappeared in a miasma of frost. When the frost cleared, Ice stuck the backs of their clothes to the wall. They hung there, eyes squeezed shut and mouths open. Good job, Iolair, Caden laughed. But then the clothes ripped and the humans were falling. No! Lunging for them would crush them against the Emporium and there were no more clothes to freeze. Frozen flesh would not be a good idea. So they made snow. Mounds of it that gave the humans a soft landing. We got them! They're okay! Caden cried. But then he heard the soft footsteps as Landry ran towards the opposite side of the Emporium, laughing. Where is she going? Caden asked. They rose up just as Landry reached the opposite ledge. 
she turned around to face him. Two flaps of their wings, and they were high above the Emporium. Landry's face tracked them. What's the behemoth doing? The behemoth was smiling again. And then those eyes changed. The behemoth blinked. Confusion followed. More blinking. Caden? Landry's voice came out uncertain, but hers. Landry? Landry? Landry smiled broadly. But then, in a flash, for just a second, the behemoth was back, grinning like a loon and throwing Landry's body off of the Emporium. But then it left her, and all the protection being a shifter gave was gone. So when she hit the ground, that would be it. Her skull would crack open like an egg. Her organs would splatter inside of her body. The skin would hold, but everything inside would be broken. No! They sent a blast of ice towards her. It solidified behind her and formed a slide that curled to the ground like a water park ride. Landry's body slid down the slide and was ejected from the bottom into a pile of snow. Caden couldn't see through the blasts of frost if she was okay. They landed in the back alley where she was. He saw the pile of snow, but no Landry. Did you know that you can get some of my gay romance books for free? Every month, I have at least one book free to download, right from Amazon, so you can easily read it on any device. But these books can only be free for five days at a time. If you don't want to miss out, just sign up for my mailing list, and I'll send you an email whenever there's a free book available. The link to the sign-up form is in the description down below. Landry! Landry! Suddenly a dark head popped out of the snow. She shook the snow away from her eyes and face. Caden? She cried. Oh my god, Landry, you're okay, you're here. They lowered their head to smell her, to search for wounds. She wrapped her arms around their snout and held onto them with all her might. I'm okay, oh my god, I can't believe it. I was in the lair, and then, then I was here, falling in that slide. That was incredible. She twisted around to look at the ice slide that glittered in the moonlight. We've got to do that again. Caden shifted into his human form and embraced her. Maybe later when my heart isn't in my throat, Iolair and I are a little freaked out. She turned around and blinked. There you are. Oh, Caden, I don't know what happened. How did I get free? The behemoth wanted to... to kill you, Caden said softly. It wanted me to feel its failure by hurting you. She pulled back. Her mouth opened in an O of horror and surprise. Of course it did. Of course. She shook herself, still a little stunned that the behemoth had intended her to die. Truly die. My brothers, are they? She stopped, not wanting to ask, but still wanting to know. They're okay, still possessed, but I've got them cocooned in ice. They aren't going anywhere, and they can't hurt anyone, Caden assured her. She blew her bangs out of her eyes. Ah, oh, well, that's a relief. Though I should be grateful we didn't hurt anyone. We didn't hurt anyone, did we? Alarm had her voice rising up to a higher octave than her usual one. No, everything's okay. He didn't tell her about Shoni. He didn't want to scare her, and he didn't know the situation there anyways. You can't go to them, Landry. It's not safe. They're not... them. No, I know. Oh, man, they're probably so freaked out in the lair. She wrung her hands together. I know, but it'll be over soon, Caden guessed. He hoped. But it was all hanging on the behemoth going back to the crater. What if he was wrong? What if the crater wasn't the behemoth's lair? What if the dragons waited for the behemoth and never came? They'd have to go back to their lairs and have all this begin again. Yeah, before I left, um, we could hear dragons roaring even in the lair, she said. Last battle? Last battle, he agreed. For now, he added silently. I just need to find Jasper. He's the last free part of the horde. Jasper? Oh, of course he's the last part of the horde standing. God, he would be. She crossed her arms over her chest. She patted the front of her bare chest and then blushed. Oh, my God, I'm naked. Caden, I'm naked! He laughed. He couldn't help it. It was such a relief to hear her, to see her, to feel her. Oh, it was so good! Here, let me open the Emporium. Plenty of clothes in there for you to put on, Caden said. He went over and used his great strength to easily break the lock. 
The door swung open for Landry. She headed over to the open door eagerly, picking her way carefully on the broken concrete of the alley. Landry, stay in the warehouse. Don't come out. Stay out of sight, okay? Caden told her. She nodded. Go to your hero thing. I'll be here. I hope Wally left that bag of Cheetos in his desk. I'm starving. He watched as she walked inside. When he was sure she was safe, he shifted, and they rose up into the air with a few powerful beats of their wings. They rose up behind the Emporium and had a bird's eye view of the square. People were still loitering about, but he was pleased to see that many were trying to help the wounded. There were so many crushed and broken bodies, though, that it hurt to look at them. He saw the red and white lights of ambulances and police cars trying to get to the square, but too many people blocked the streets and they couldn't get through. As they scanned the crowd, looking for a single naked figure, they flew over to the ambulances. They picked up the stuck emergency vehicles in their claws. Heads poked out of windows of bug-eyed AMTs as they carefully airlifted the vehicles into the square near the wounded. There were claps and calls of thanks before the emergency services personnel poured out and started helping their patients. It was on one of these trips, bringing vehicles in, that Caden just happened to see a hooded figure moving furtively along the outside of the square. They carried a backpack. A rush of deja vu filled Caden. They, no he, was bringing the backpack around to his chest and opening the flap. Red flashing numbers illuminated upwards from the depths of the pack and showed Jasper's face. A bomb. Caden shifted above the square and silently dropped down. He moved like liquid between the people towards the hooded figure with the backpack. Jasper was frantically punching buttons on the advice, trying to make it go off then and there. He lifted his head just as Caden plowed into him. They were in front of the ice cream store. They crashed through the plate glass window. They landed on the shiny black and white tiled floor. Jasper was on the bottom. Caden was on top. Jasper was still pressing buttons, even as they slid all the way to the ice cream freezers in the back. Caden punched Jasper in the face again and again, using all of his strength, not holding back. As a behemoth, Jasper could take it. Caden needed to at least distract him from the bomb. If he hurt him, sent him into unconsciousness, all the better. But Jasper fought like someone possessed by an evil spirit would fight with no quarter. Help me, Howler, give me strength, Caden cried. Additional strength surged through Caden, and his next punch connected underneath Jasper's chin. Jasper's head snapped back, and he appeared dazed. That gave Caden the opportunity he needed. He pulled the backpack from Jasper's hands and leaped to his feet. He had to get it out of there. He leaped towards the shattered windows in order to jump out, shift, and soar well above the square where the bomb could go off without hurting anyone but he only took one step before Jasper jumped onto his back. Caden's head was smashed against the backpack, but that gave him a close-up look at the timer. 30 seconds left. It's like the day we met, Iolair. Jasper was screaming as he was pummeling Caden's back, shoulders, and head. The screams didn't sound human. They were blood-wrenching and terrible to hear. Caden, though, had no time to think about how to silence them. He simply kept moving. Jasper clung to him as he leaped out of the ice cream shop and shifted. They shot up into the air, straight up, as fast and as far as they could go. Caden could hear the bomb's counter ticking down, or thought he did. He could also hear Jasper still screaming. The man was still holding on to him, but it was just his tail. They were up so high that the air grew colder. The moonlight lit them up and caused the world to glow a ghostly white. Caden could see high reach in the distance. It was peaceful, remarkably peaceful in a way. And then the last beep, and the bomb exploded. It was anticlimactic if he was to compare it to the day he and Iolair had joined. Once more, the bomb did absolutely nothing to them. Nails and other metal pieces that had been packed inside just bounced off their scales and fell harmlessly away. The blast would have ripped through human flesh and shattered human bones, but was rendered in barely a soft pat. Good job, Iolair, Caden said. The white dragon spirit twittered the same back to him. They had done well. Jasper had stopped screaming. He was just hanging onto their tail, glaring up at them with all the behemoth's bitterness and hate. But there was that fear there and despair now. It was indeed over.
Jasper let go and started to fall. They watched the body of the leader of humans first tumble end over end a bit. The scream that reached them no longer sounded inhuman, but instead very, very human. The behemoth had done what it had done with Landry, released Jasper so that he would die a very mortal human death. Let's save him. Jasper doesn't get away with all he's done this easy, Caden said to Ilair. They darted downwards towards the earth. They resembled a sleek white missile that flew past Jasper's flailing, falling form. They plucked him out of the air and held him lightly in one of their claws. He still kept screaming for about 30 seconds before he realized he had been saved. He blinked up at Caden. He didn't say thank you. He just glared, too, but not with the fire the behemoth had. They landed in the square. Jasper struggled to get out of their claws and strove to look dignified while others looked on at him with suspicion. Just look at the damage shifters do, Jasper got out as he saw the damage the behemoth had done that he had done. Their eyes narrowed. Jasper was not trying to play the innocent, was he? Of course he is. If we didn't have shifters in the world, none of this would have... Oh my God, what is that? Jasper practically curled into a ball in his terror. It took Caden a minute to realize what he was looking at. It was a swarm, a huge swarm, so big and thick that the air was warmer around it. Bees and wasps flew together in a tight man-sized shape. The insects moved out of the way to show Valerius' face. Valerius was flying inside of the swarm. Caden blinked. Olair, are you seeing what I am? The white dragon spirit twittered in awe. Valerius lightly stepped out of the swarm, which became Rose and Marban. Everyone backed away except for him and Jasper, who still cowered. Caden, hi, Olair. Valerius cried, running up to them. There was such love, but also desperation in his face and voice. She only needs you. You must fly her to the sun. I hope you're enjoying Dragon's Reign so far. Dragon's Reign is free for you to enjoy, but not free for us to make. There is a whole team working with me for audio editing, artwork, graphic design, and custom music. Most YouTube channels and podcasts have sponsors and take ads, but because of the kind of content we make, we can't run ads or get sponsors. Instead, we have other ways you can support me and the team behind this gay romance audiobook. One easy way is to buy or borrow my books from Amazon. They are all gay romance set in alternative worlds with vampires or shifters and other magical beings. You may not know that even if you borrow books with your Kindle Unlimited subscription at Amazon, they are free for you, but they still earn us money. The books are published under the name Ex Aratare, which actually means wraith in Romanian. And if you love audiobooks, you can get professionally narrated versions of every one of my books on audible.com. The link to my author page is in the description below, as well as to the first book of the series I think you'll really like. Thank you so much for your support. People like you enable me and the team to keep writing these stories of gay romance, magic, monsters, and true love, and producing this very fun podcast for everyone. Thank you. Thank you.